Welcome to the second day of Vacation Bible School. Do you remember what this Vacation Bible School is called? Who is my neighbor? Say that with me. Who is my neighbor? So this is the second day and we will begin uh, our worship time together with a movement prayer. I want you to repeat after me and do the motions, okay? God, we are here to learn about you. We are here to grow in our love for you. We are here to grow in our love for our neighbors. Amen. Okay, again, I'm going to open my Bible. If you have one yourself, then you do the same. Open it to the Gospel of Mark. If you forget, if you don't know, uh, it's just the second book uh, in the New Testament, Matthew and then Mark. And uh, chapter is oh, 12. So Mark chapter 12 and uh, verse 30. Now, if you have your Bible and open it, then you read with me. I, you know I cannot hear you, but I trust that you will read with me. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. Mark chapter 12, verse 30. Now this verse means that we are to love God with every part of ourselves. Every part of ourselves. Our heart and soul, mind and strength. So, 100% of us. And I want you to do this. I'm going to read the scripture again. And when I read heart, you point your heart. Oh, there's a problem. Soul. How are you going to uh, point, uh, point soul, uh, minds, and, and strength? Well, here's the deal. You point your body for your soul, head for your mind, and make a muscle for strength. Okay? Let's do that. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Again, you're going to watch the drama <coughs> and you're going to watch the drama and listen carefully to the story Jesus told because it will help us answer the question we asked earlier, who is my neighbor? <coughs> now, before you watch the drama, I want you to know something. Samaritans lived in the northern part of Israel. When the people were captured by the Assyrians, the Samaritans mixed with the Syrian people, <coughs> excuse me, they married each other and developed different ways and places to worship God. Priests, Levites, and experts in the law lived in the southern part of Israel also called Judah, they looked down on Samaritans because they thought they were not 
pure Israelites. Okay, let's watch the drama. Teacher, what do I need to do to receive life with God? Well, what do you read in the law? What does it say? The law says you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind and with all your strength. And you should love your neighbor as yourself. You're right. That is what the law says. We are to love God and love our neighbors. But teacher, who is my neighbor? I will answer your question by telling you a story. Listen carefully. On a steep and lonely road from Jerusalem to Jericho, a traveler lay beside the road. He needed help. Robbers had beaten him. They'd taken his money and clothes. A priest walked by the hurt traveler. A priest was someone who was an expert in the law. He would have known that he is to love God and love his neighbors. Okay. This is such a dangerous road. Thank you, God. Thank you that it is not me who was attacked. I hope someone helps this traveler. A few minutes after the priest walked by the injured traveler, a Levite came along. He was an also an expert in the law. He would have known that he is to love God and love his neighbors. Oh my, this man is hurt. May God keep robbers far away from me. And then a Samaritan traveled down the road. No way. Don't compare us with the Samaritans. We're much better than, than the Samaritans. They're despicable. And then a Samaritan traveled down the road. He saw the injured traveler and stopped. <laughs> the Samaritan went over and bent down to help the man. He put oil on the man's cuts and bandaged his wounds. The Samaritan cared for the hurt traveler. The traveler needed rest and good food to get better. Your name, Keeper. This man is hurt and needs some rest. Here's some money. Please take care of my, good care of my new friend. If you spend more money than this, I will pay you more next time I see you. And that's the story to answer the question, who is my neighbor? Which one of these people do you think acted like a good neighbor? The neighbor was the man who showed kindness and took care of the traveler. You are right. Now go and do the same. Welcome back to Music Time with Mr. Matt. Let's start our music time today by singing one of the songs we learned yesterday, You Shall Love the Lord. Join me in singing together.
Great job, everybody! Well, today I want to start with a little rhythm game that my friend Lucinda taught to me. Lucinda lives in the United Kingdom, way over in Europe, and she has a delightful accent that I can't quite do perfectly, but it's close to this. And she taught me this little clapping game when I was studying in a country called Hungary. Yes, that is a country in Europe. It's not what you're feeling when your stomach grumbles. Here's the game. Let's put one hand out in front of you and the other hand on top of it. This is getting us ready for the game. Now I'm going to bring the top hand over and be equal. And my original hand is going to go on top over here. So they just switched places. Now let's go back to where we started. And now switch, and switch, and switch, and switch, and stay the same. Gotcha. Here we go. And switch, and switch. All right, just seeing if you were paying attention there. Now, the game actually goes, you take your lower hand, and you're going to go down, up, down. Try that with me. Ready, and down, up, down. And now you switch, and you have down, up, down, just with the other hand. All right, try that with me. Down, up, down. All right, so go back to your first place. And now it just goes down, up, down, down, up, down, without stopping. So watch once. We have down, up, down, down, up, down. That's usually the trickiest part. Try it with me. Here we go. Down, up, down. One more time, down, up, down, ready, and stop. All right, great. You'll have some more practice that uh, with that today. I know a song that goes with those claps. Let's take a listen. I need to find the right starting pitch. We have... All grown-ups, all children, all mothers, all fathers, our sisters and brothers in the family of God. Oh my goodness, try clapping with me this time. I'll sing, you clap. Here we go. All grown-ups, all children, all mothers, all fathers, our sisters and brothers in the family of God. Great, now this time just listen to the words of the song. I won't even clap this time. All grown-ups, all children, all mothers, all fathers, our sisters and brothers in the family of God. Try singing with me. All grown-ups, all children, all mothers, all fathers, our sisters and brothers in the family of God. Now, can you clap? and sing. Let's find out. Get in your first position. Here we go. All grown-ups, all children, all mothers, all fathers, our sisters and brothers in the family of God. <laughs> Great. You'll have some more chances to practice that. Let's try the whole song. Every time we get to this part of the song, called the chorus or the refrain, let's do our special clapping pattern. On the verses of the song, you can either try to sing along with me, or you can tap the beat of the music, and I'll be showing you some creative tapping patterns as we go. So here we go. Let's try God's Family. Grown-ups, all children, all mothers, all fathers, our sisters and brothers in the family of God. I am a person, God made me special, you are a person and you're special too. We have our families and friends that we play with, there are so many good things we can do. All grown-ups, all children, all mothers, all fathers, our sisters and brothers in the family of God. So many children, all of them different, God gave each person his own thing to do. All of God's children, our sisters and brothers, I know God 
God loves me and God loves you too. All grown ups, all children, all mothers, all fathers, our sisters and brothers in the family of God. God has a family with so many people, grown ups and children who love God today. We get together to care for each other, to worship and learn how to follow God's way. All grown ups, all children, all mothers, all fathers, our sisters and brothers in the family of God. All grown ups, all children, all mothers, all fathers, our sisters and brothers in the family of God. <laughs> My goodness, that was almost too much fun. All right, well, we have one more new song today. It's a little slower, and this song reminds us that God wants to be friends with us, and that God also wants us to be friends with one another. Can you tap the beat as I play this song on my melodica? Here I go. Now let's learn some words. Please sing after me. Our God is a God who makes friends. Our God is a God who makes friends. Our God is a God who is faithful to the end. Our God is, Our God is a God who makes friends. <laughs> Our God wants us all to be friends. Mm -hmm. Our God wants us all to be friends. Mm -hmm. Yes, you as well as I, we're the very ones God sends. Mm -hmm. Our God wants us all to be friends. Mm -hmm. Awesome, awesome. All right, now let's sing the whole song together. Let's join in singing, Our God is a God who makes friends. Oh, 
Well, I can't believe it, but we have reached the end of music time again so soon. Let's sing our goodbye song together. Get ready to clap with your friends. Here we go. I need a friend. I need a friend. I need a friend who's just like you. Come hold my hand. I'll hold yours too. I need a friend who's just like you. You are my friend. You are my friend. You are my friend and I love you. When I go home, I'll think of you. You are my friend and I love you. Well, have a wonderful rest of the day. I will see you next time. Hello, VBS friends, and welcome to day two of Who is My Neighbor? The Crafts. I forgot to tell you yesterday that I hope that you had a lovely day, since that was the theme for the craft that day. Today, uh, we have a choice of actually two crafts, and you can choose to do one or the other, or you can choose to do both of them. Uh, I will let, that, let you choose that. You'll look in your sack and you'll find a packet of pink papers today, and it has both of the crafts. The first one is called Olive Oil Paintings, and the second one is on a smaller piece of paper, and it's called 3D Helping Hand. And um, the first one that we're going to do is the olive oil painting. Again, you're going to need newspaper on a table. Uh, you will need a piece of paper. I have just some white paper. Um, I'm not sure what color you might have in your packet. You'll need crayons or wax crayons. I know a lot, a lot of people like to draw with colored pencils or with markers, but this particular craft, you really do need crayons or it might, it probably won't work out quite as well. You need to ask an adult to get you some cooking oil. So I brought some uh, olive oil, but it can certainly be any other kind of oil you might have in your kitchen. Ask um, an adult to help get that for you. And you should have a cotton ball in your sack and you'll need a little, some kind of a little bowl to hold your olive oil in. And what the first thing you'll, you'll do is you're going to draw uh, something on a, on a piece of paper. It might have something to do with the Good Samaritan since that's what your story is about this time. So I tried to draw the best thing I could think of, a picture of the Good Samaritan helping the man who is, was hurt. You are probably going to draw a whole lot better than I can. Um, so you draw whatever you would like or you can make it just a, a free form design. It's up to you, this is your craft. Uh, I did write the word love at the top, so that I can keep remembering that that was why the Good Samaritan helped the man. But the, the reason that you wanna, you're going to want to do crayons is because you're going to have to push kind of hard. Sometimes you might like to just color and just kind of just make things a really pretty color and just barely get any crayon on there you're gonna to need to press pretty hard for this to work out um, for the craft. So we are gonna show you um, by drawing some, uh, some extra lines on my paper so how hard you're gonna to have to push. All right, so I'm going to add some more blue sky. And some of my sky, I don't think I pressed quite hard enough. So remember I said you're need to, gonna need to really press hard with your crayons. You want it to be dark enough that, that the olive oil is going to do, kind of make a magic trick here. But you gotta have the crayons dark enough or it's not gonna work. And I'm gonna add some orange lines on this guy's, on the, the poor man that's hurt. I'm gonna add some orange lines on his robe so we can, see a little bit more of the color and I think I'm going to add an orange heart around the outside just to add a little bit more color so you can kind of see what it's going to do and again it oh, 
yours is going to look probably much better than mine, so whatever you draw will be just right. All right, when you think you're finished, which I think, well, I don't think I can do any more, then you're going to turn your paper over and you're going to use your cotton ball in the oil and rub it over the top. And what that does is it makes the colors brighter. Can you see the colors in that paper? And it make, brightens up the colors. And after we're, we get all done, so let me do get the rest of him done here. Oh, I can see my, my hurt man and I can see the Samaritan. And I'm, I'm going to try to get all over. Now, if you have something on all over your paper, you're going to have, have your whole paper covered. I don't have that much, so I'm going to quit there. And you know what? I can see the newspaper through that paper. I, can, I thought maybe I had my, my paper moved a little bit, but that's the newspaper I'm seeing. So then, and I think I forgot to tell you to get a paper towel or a napkin or something to kind of daub off a little bit of the extra oil that's on there because you don't really need it to take a long time to dry. dry. You want it to be able to be seen pretty quickly. And what it does, it, it's a kind of a big word. It makes the paper translucent, which means kind of semi-transparent. So if I hold it over this newspaper, I can kind of see the newspaper through my pic picture. And it also uh, will brighten up the colors of my crayons. So that's the first craft, which is called olive oil painting. Helps you remember that the Samaritan treated the man's wounds with olive oil or with oil. That was um, what they used back in those days in Bible times. And um, helps you to remember to, to love one another. Okay, the second activity uh, for this for day two is called 3D Helping Hand. And it's going to kind of look like this when you get finished. And I'll show you how, how you're going to make one. In your packet, you should have a kind of a large piece of white paper. I think you're going to want to cut that into two pieces because I discovered even with my hand, I, it, it, the large piece of paper is way too big. So I think you're going to need a, a half of a piece of white paper, some kind of a pencil, um, I would use newspaper again just to draw around things and you can have crayons, you can use markers, you can use colored pencils and you can use a ruler of some kind. So you're going to draw around your hand. If you're a little person and you're doing this craft, you can have a, a, an adult or a friend draw around your hand for you. I'm going to draw around with my pencil. And I probably everybody has done this at some point in their life. And I have drawn around my ring, so I'm going to kind of <laughs> fix that little spot right there. So I have my hand drawn around. And now you're going to draw the lines, the straight lines, to um, make the 3D helping hand. So I'm going to finish the, the, the hand here that I've drawn around my hand. And you can use a ruler. I'll show you a couple of different ways here. So I'm going, I drew a line there and I'm gonna go across here. But don't draw where the hand is because where the hand is, you're gonna wanna make a little, a little arc. And I'll tell you, um, <laughs> it's not easy. So you, you know, it's, I'll just tell you, it doesn't have to be perfect um, because mine certainly is not. And it, take, it takes a little bit of practice. You might decide you need another piece of paper and you're going to give it another whirl. That's okay too. So I'm going to go across there and across there and across there, but then I'm going to come back and make a little arc and a little arc here. The closer the lines are together, the more that the hand will show. 
kind of look 3D. All right, I've got an arc here and an arc here and an arc here. All right, and I'm probably not gonna finish the whole thing just so I think you can kind of get the idea. So we've got an arc here. Now, when I look at it, I'm going, hey, there's kind of a lot of room in between these two lines. So you can kind of freehand just make a line and make another arc in the middle. That, that's just fine. Like I say, you can use a ruler, you can you cannot use a ruler. It's kind of up to you. Then you're gonna wanna color the lines, but you're gonna you're gonna I think I would rather that you um, maybe draw around well, no, I think you can color you can color the lines, but color every other one. All right, so I'm gonna color this one. And I'm going to outline that line that I drew there. And I'm going to outline there and outline that. So I'm going to color this one, this color. You can, on this, you can use crayons. On this, you can use markers or you can use colored pencils. Whatever you have at home is fine. But you're going to skip this next one and you're going to color this one. All right. So you're not going to, not going to color every one, otherwise it's not gonna show up. I suppose you could color a different color. You don't have to leave it white. You could color a different color there. All right, so it's going to, after you get them all colored, I'll finish this one line. I think I could have made that line maybe a little skinnier, but you'll decide that when you're doing yours and you're going to it's going to end up kind of looking like this and it's going to be kind of kind of sticks out at you the 3d hand uh, you see i outlined that one with a pen and you can do that as well um, but this is just to kind of help you that to remember that the Good Samaritan used his hands to help the hurt man. And I hope that you can remember and think about what you can do with your hands and how you can be a helper to someone. Hello again, and welcome to the second day of Bible Stories. I hope you enjoy today's Bible drama. Our youth had a great time acting it out. You didn't watch it yet? Well, what are you waiting for? Go do that and I will be waiting here. Oh, okay, great. In today's story, we hear the classic tale of the Good Samaritan. Now, the Samaritans lived in a separate part of Israel. Many people in Jesus' time looked down on Samaritans. They didn't expect Samaritans to do anything good. Priests and Levites worked in the temple. They were the leaders. They should have been the best at helping people. But were they? Who most acted like a neighbor in this story? Today's Bible story comes from the book of Luke, chapter 10, verses 25 through 37. A legal expert stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to gain eternal life? Jesus replied, what is written in the law? How do you interpret it? He responded, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus said to him, you have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. But the legal expert wanted to prove that he was right, so he said to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. He encountered thieves who stripped him naked, beat him up, and left him near death. Now it just so happened that a priest was also going down the same road. When he saw the injured man, he crossed over to the other side of the road and went on his way. Likewise, a Levite came by that spot, saw the injured man, and crossed over to the other side of the road and went on his way. A Samaritan, who was on a journey, came to where the man was. But when he saw him, he was moved with compassion. The Samaritan went to him and bandaged his wounds, tending them with oil and wine. Then he placed the wounded man on his own donkey, took him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day, he took two full days' worth of wages and gave them to the innkeeper. He said, 
Take care of him, and when I return, I will pay you back for any additional costs. What do you think? Which one of these three was a neighbor to the man who encountered thieves? Then the legal expert said, the one who demonstrated mercy toward him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. This story that Jesus told is important because it shows that neighbors are not always who we expect them to be. Sometimes even strangers can be our neighbors. The Samaritan wasn't expected to stop and help the injured traveler, yet he did. Even if we don't know someone, we can show that we care about them and that we are good neighbors. Maybe there are children at school who don't have a lot of friends, or children who live on your street who speak a different language than you do. You can be neighbors to them and show that you care, and who knows, maybe one day you will be friends. Today's Bible memory passage follows the verses learned yesterday. Let's say yesterday's passage first. So yesterday's passage was from the book of Mark, chapter 12, verses 28b through 29. Which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, the first is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. So today's passage comes from the book of Mark, chapter 12, verse 30. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. I bet you can say that five times fast. Practice at home. Now, in your guidebook, on pages 8 and 9, you can find a retelling of today's story on page 8. Whoop. And on page 9, you will draw a line from the start of today's memory verse at the top left-hand corner all the way to the bottom at the right-hand corner. While we pray today, think of some things that your community and our world need right now and how you can help. Let us pray. Dear God, the world has a lot of needs. Show us how to help you meet the needs you see around us. Amen. I hope you enjoyed today's story. See you tomorrow. Okay, this is day two and our science activity for our Vacation Bible School, Who is My Neighbor? So first of all, let's take a look at the materials that you'll need for the science experiment. You will find your instructions for day two on the pink colored cards in your packet. So that can help you to follow along or do the experiment on your own if you'd like to. The materials that you're gonna need for this particular experiment are a Bible, a mirror. I happen to have a specialized mirror that I use for other science experiments, but maybe you would have a mirror like this in your household, or maybe someone in your household has maybe a pocket mirror or a mirror that they might carry in their purse, <clears throat> but that might be different mirrors that you could find at home to do this activity with. So in this activity, we're going to, first of all, take your mirror and look at the Bible text in the mirror. Huh, what do you see? I noticed that the words are backwards. What we're seeing is a reflection of light off of the mirror. So when you see letters in the mirror, that reflection has flipped, you might say, as the light travels back to your eye and makes the letters appear different. But if you look at your face in the mirror, it does not switch your features around or does not appear to. Although, you know, maybe if I put a red earring on and a green earring on, you might be able to see a difference in that uh, your face in the mirror. But the reason that you don't when you look into the mirror is that your face is somewhat symmetrical. In other words, you have one eye on each side of your face, you have one ear on each side of your head, and that's what I mean by symmetrical. So there are some similar objects on each half of your face, and that's why it looks like the same thing reflected back to you. So let's see what, how we might do that a little bit differently. We're going to use one of your mirrors and a picture that you might have. I chose one of my son's eighth birthday for this experiment. And you're going to hold the picture up to the mirror so that about half of 
the picture is behind the mirror and half is in front of the person. I realize that my picture is a little bit bigger, but you're really wanting to kind of divide the person or the picture of the person in half and then look at what you see in the mirror. So I'm gonna turn it around so I can see and describe it to you a little bit better. If I get it just right, whoo, <laughs> I can see a lot better. <laughs> Uh, yeah. What I see then is half of the picture in the mirror <clears throat> or being reflected back at me. But what I'm really looking at is the half of the picture that is in front of the mirror rather than behind the mirror. So that is light being reflected off of the picture. But remember, other people don't look the same as us and we should be a good neighbor to all. So what did you see <clears throat> and hear during the drama about being a neighbor? Hmm? Neighbors are not just the people we know, but they can be also be strangers. By helping people and caring for them, we are good neighbors. What else did you see and hear in the drama? Here are some questions I want you to think about. Which of the people was a good neighbor to the hurt traveler? Samaritans were looked down on and disliked. And I wonder why Jesus made a Samaritan the hero. I wonder if the priest and Levite thought about the injured man later. Imagine being hurt and people walking past you. What would that feel like? Is there someone who could use your help this week? Let us pray. Jesus taught us many things today about being a neighbor. As we go about our day, let us think how we can take care of others and show that we are good neighbors. Gracious God, we thank you that we have good neighbors. And we pray that we may be good neighbors to our neighbors. By being good neighbors to others, we know that we are your people. Give all of us strength to be good neighbors. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.